The cynic in me would say we didn't want to compete with this airplane, but I think by that time we had supersonic fly. I remember supersonic flights over my house as a kid all the time. It was distracting. It was. It rattled. It rattled furniture. It, if I'm not mistaken, it was mentioned that it should be stopped because of ozone creation. There was there was an issue. Now that had nothing to do with supersonic. These airplanes were flying so high it could damage the uh, ozone. So I don't know if we were coming up with an excuse to get around there. I'm not. I'm not a cynic. I, I think the United States was just finished with supersonic flights over the United States. We abandoned our supersonic transport, the SST, right about this time. We were looking into doing the same thing and said, this is just not viable. So we abandoned it. So the airplane first flew in 1976, the Concorde's first flew. No other airplane, airline company in the world bought one. This was a joint venture between the, the British and the French. So seven were given to Air France and seven were given to British Airways. They didn't buy them. They still weren't financially successful, even when they got they got free airplanes. The British and the French governments subsidized these operations for years. First flight, as I said, Air France that day in 1976, I was I think it was January 76, flew from Paris to Rio, British Airways, London to Bahrain. The days of the Concorde were probably numbered even before the tragic accident in the summer of 2000, when an Air France Concorde taking off from Paris, remember that story, hit debris on the runway, it eventually caused a puncture of the uh, fuel tank and engulfed the entire airplane in flames and everybody on board was killed, including a number of people on the ground. They were grounded until November of 2001, and by 2003 the experiment was over. One final point on this particular airplane. In 1989, there was a joint celebration between the United States and French, and the French, celebrating the, uh, uh, the Constitution, the 100th anniversary of the Constitution, 200th anniversary of the Constitution, one, 200, what's 100 years among friends, and the French Revolution. And at the celebration, the French said to us, they were still flying these airplanes. This was 1989. They said, when we're through flying the Concorde, we're going to give you one. I said, super, thank you very much. We never bought one. We really appreciate that. <laughs> In 2003, when we opened this museum, the French made good on that promise and not only sent us a Concorde, this is the maiden voyage Concorde from 1976. The very first Air France airplane that flew, and then obviously when they flew here, the very last. So that's what the French did for us. Between 1931, when the Junkers began flying, and 1969, when the Concorde began flying, is only 38 years. We went from 120 miles an hour to two times the speed of sound. In 1969, the jumbo jet, the 747, began flying as well. Hundreds of passengers flying nonstop halfway around the world in 38 years. That's all it took. Any questions on commercial aviation? We're going to go check out the space shuttle. Everybody ready? So have they grounded all the Concords? All the Concords are in museums.